All right, full transparency, this is a sponsored video. This is the We Create Lumos. In this video, I wasn't really sure how I was going to make because this machine, from what I could tell from the specs, was more or less kind of what we see from other companies. It is a small Galvo laser, which means it's got a mirror right here. It's got kind of your normal setup that we're seeing now with a diode and an IR module, and it's around a thousand bucks. So when I first was sent this, I really didn't know like what makes this unique, especially unique enough to make an entire video about. That was until I actually pulled the thing out and started to play with it. And I noticed there is one very unique feature about this I don't think I've seen in any other machine. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you what that feature is, as well as some other cool things that I think we create is doing. All right, so I don't wanna bury the lead. Basically the key feature about this that makes this really unique is the IR module specifically. Uh, but before we get into what makes it unique, let's talk about like how this actually works normally. So this is a 10 watt diode module. This one also has a 10 watt diode module and these are your kind of normal-ish blue light diodes that you've seen in a lot of videos like this where you can visually see the laser firing and that's actually why they have this cover that can drop down that kind of has that same tint uh, to be able to protect your eyes when this is running. Normally when I'm giving recommendations 10 watts is a little underpowered um, but that is normally if you're putting this on like an open style gantry so that would be something like the Weaker 8 Vision which actually has this on a gantry and moves this around and that one you can get in like 20, 40 and I think now with their Vision Pro 40 25 watts. And I normally say 20 watts is a pretty good starting point, especially if you're wanting to do some cutting. But with machines like this, cutting is nice, but I definitely recommend Galvo style machines for people who are wanting to do engraving because they are way faster than a gantry style machine. This one specifically is 4,000 millimeters per second versus like 800 to around 1,000 millimeters per second for a gantry. Um, but the drawback of that is you have a much smaller work area. So I have the bed in there, but this is the same size. So it's not huge uh, because the beam is going to go out of focus as that is bouncing around um, and so you just can't move it super super far. And that's something that's going to be universally true of any Galvo machine. The work area is going to be a lot smaller even when you have ones that are way bigger and way higher powered. So dia, cool. That more or less checks the box and it's more or less kind of standard with what we see. Now, what gets really unique is their IR module. And this one also is an IR module. And what's handy about an IR module versus a traditional diode um, is the wavelength. So IR literally means infrared. And because of that wavelength, you're able to interact with other materials, specifically metal. But something that's kind of universal with diodes um, is the laser dot is kind of messy. Now diodes do have a better beam quality uh, than like a glass CO2 laser, but a normal diode is not gonna be nearly as nice what a traditional fiber laser is going to be able to do for you. Now there's two things that make a fiber laser unique. One unique thing is that it can pulse the laser and basically deliver all the power all at once. And that's something that this IR module and pretty much any normal diode laser is not gonna do for you. But there's a second thing that fiber lasers do that has to do with this fiber optic cable. So it has a laser source, they also call it a pump source, which normally is a diode laser. Then it pumps it through the fiber optic cable. And then inside of that cable, they have a gain medium and that laser medium re-emits the laser beam, but that beam is a much higher quality. So then when it actually goes through the full system and then comes down, that's what allows you to get those really fine markings. Now fibers are great, but they also are more expensive and they're bigger, but this guy is doing the same idea. So with theirs, you still have a pump diode, but instead of coming straight out, just like their normal 10 watts, it goes through its own gain medium. And that is also a special crystal, which re emits a laser beam that is much higher quality and then it fires it through. And you might be like, Brandon, okay, that's great. I don't really care about the physics. What does that actually mean for me? This gives you a much, much finer laser dot. So your final engraves can be way more intricate. You can do higher DPI or really higher line intervals when you're doing like photo engraves. Even though this is three watts in power, that power is concentrated into a smaller spot. So that's why in their marketing, they're saying this is like equivalent to a higher power laser. What they really mean and this is equivalent to something that's higher power because that higher power is messier for their actual 
laser beam. So if you look at other brands and other machines that have a traditional three watt IR, those are normally like 0.03 millimeters, where this one is three times smaller at 0.01. Now definitely take those exact readings with a grain of salt, because that's gonna be super like focus dependent and material dependent, but just know at like a fundamental level, this is working in a different way than a normal three watt IR. So when I actually turned this on and started playing with it, and especially doing these like DPI tests, um, I was really surprised, I was like, wait a minute, I can go way higher than I normally can. What's going on with this IR module? And then I actually saw, oh, this is a total different type. So that is one of the huge key reasons that this machine is really cool, especially if you wanna do really fine engraving on materials that can fit in a small-ish work area. Which brings me to the second thing that I thought was really cool once I started playing with it, which also plays into what they're calling their Beam Focus 2.0. And then that is the form factor of this machine. Um, so it is relatively small uh, and relatively portable. It even has a nice little handle right here at the top. So this really is a great setup if you want something that is a little bit more portable, especially if you're doing like craft shows or you need to take this somewhere and do engravings in front of people, um, this is a really cool option to do it. And just because I like all the nerdy physics stuff, going back to the fiber laser again, one of the advantages of having that gain medium just being a solid state crystal, which is small, versus inside of a long fiber optic cable, is it gets to be way more compact. Even with something like this, which for fiber laser is relatively small, still is much bigger to move around. But the advantages of using a long fiber optic cable like that is all that heat can be absorbed over a much longer area, meaning that you can do that crazy pulsing, but also you can have much higher power. So normally with like a solid state IR module that's doing this like gain crystal filtering, those are gonna be relatively small in overall power. But for a use case like this, it's still kind of works. And you might have heard me talk about diodes and beam size in terms of the number of diode modules they have inside of this. Um, so normally they are like five watts. So to get higher power, you basically have to add in additional diodes. And then when you combine those optically together, you're gonna get a messier beam. So that's why you've heard me and other folks mention like a 40 watt diode laser is not gonna be as precise as like a five watt diode laser. But that is all because of the number of diodes. That is totally different than what we're talking about that special crystal that is re-emitting a new laser beam once the diodes initially go through it. And so that second benefit is the portability along with the ease of use. And so to that ease of use for focus, you kind of have the standard two laser beams. Um, one is an actual low powered diode. So this blue light right there is the 10 watt diode that would fire. It's just at low power, so it's not hurting me. But that's handy because you can use the actual optic line to be able to do focus. And then off to the side, they have a red diode, just like a red laser pointer. But those are aligned so that when those dots cross, which we have a dial on the back, we can raise this and lower this really easy. You can basically watch, get those lined up. Once they're lined up, it's in focus. There's also just an autofocus button on the back as well, which is gonna use some sensors. Another ease of use thing that some of these smaller machines don't have, but this one does, is this does have an integrated camera right here on the inside. You can do that focus process and it'll automatically take a picture and you can see what's inside and what you're about to work with. Now the portability and speed is great, but you lose work area. So uh, they also are including something that started to become a little bit more popular and that is a slider and their slider implementation um, is like fairly straightforward so, so it's just two cables on the back uh, that hooks up all right so i'm going to try to do this like backwards without looking uh but yeah it basically slots into place and so it's locked into a specific position and then you just have two of these guys on the back to hook up and then you're going to be good to go. And I find using sliders can be a little bit finicky, but this one works like relatively well. Now they've got uh, these guys right here that are basically clamps. And it's really designed for material that's no bigger than like what, 11 and a half millimeters. But I was just using these full test pieces that I use with my normal lasers and kind of like clipping it off to the side. And a setup like that worked totally fine. And so even though you're limited by the Galvo itself, by using a slider, you can do much bigger material because it can move the material through the Galvo. It can process like everything at once. It can do letters individually uh, and then make it really easy to get it set up and go. Now, speaking of software and features, they've recently added the ability to do bi-directional engraving, which is something you normally would be able to do on most machines. And actually the folks over at Laser Everything, they have an awesome YouTube channel that goes really deep into a lot of these specifics. I think they were working back and forth with WeCreate and they mentioned it and then they added it in as a feature. So that's great to see that WeCreate is listening and then adding in things that people might want to use. And speaking of software, you can use their own WeCreate Make It, um, which has like most of the standard features that 
that you would want with some of the like hyper AI stuff in there. Um, but the overall process is pretty easy, especially if you're a beginner. But it also has full support for Lightburn, which some bigger manufacturers no longer are really supporting. So that's great if you're already in like the Lightburn world with other machines, this can plug directly into it. And you don't have to be afraid that you're gonna be locked into their software if you just wanna go with Lightburn in the future. But because they have their own software, there is a pretty unique thing that you can do inside of We Create Make It. And that has to do with color marking. And if you've never done any type of color marking before, you have to do it on specific types of metal. Uh, and a lot of times it's gonna be like stainless steel or even like titanium if you're super rich and you engrave on that. But basically the process to create color is you're building up layers of oxidation. So like the thinnest layers are gonna be like yellow and it slowly gets darker and darker and darker until you get black, uh, which is going to be like the thickest layer. And so that same principle can apply to pretty much any type of laser that can oxidize on metal. And this IR module is no different, but why it works so much better than traditional is those markings are a lot more precise. So when you oxidize metal, you're just heating it up and then the air is reacting to it. But when you have a bigger, messy laser beam, uh, it's harder to be able to finely control how that oxidation works. And with color engravings, you really need fine control. So the smaller, nicer laser beam with this guy allows you to do that. That's also why you can get a bigger range with a bigger MOPA fiber laser, where that is just a type of fiber laser, which gives you the ability to control more of the laser frequency, as well as more of the pulse width, basically giving you more ways to dial in the laser dot to give you even more control, even versus this guy. But you can do it. And what's nice about the software uh, is they have a pretty cool integration where it's gonna give you a test file that's gonna just power and speed. Uh, and then it's gonna produce a bunch of different colors. And then what you can do with an image actually in the software is match those colors to the colors of the image and then it'll automatically do all those calculations. To where like before that process was pretty convoluted, you'd have to bring in a color image, uh, split it out by color, trim those colors into vectors, and then each of those vectors individually apply specific settings. The software just makes that process a lot, a lot easier. And finally, the last thing, but it's not really a feature, and we've mentioned it already, is the price. So at the time of this recording, uh, they've got a Christmas sale going on that brings this price to 1100 bucks, which is really competitive for what this thing actually offers you. There's links down below uh, if you want to check it out. And if there's any type of specific discount, I'll include that in the link as well. Now, I totally get it. This is a sponsored video, but I wouldn't have made the video if I didn't actually think this thing was really cool to begin with. So I would love to know your thoughts. Is that really precise IR module worth it to you? And if you have any questions about it, let me know in the comments. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.